Hello, creatives. Miss Nikki here from Studio CIA Classes. I hope you're ready to be creative and use that imagination of yours. Because today, I'm going to teach you how to draw a curious Christmas kitten who happens to get himself stuck in the wreath. Where this wreath is hanging is up to you. We'll go through the process twice, once with a pencil so we can use our eraser and really get everything exactly how we want it. And then we'll work on our muscle memory and improve our drawing by outlining everything in a Sharpie and go through it a second time. So feel free to watch this first time through and then join me when I get those Sharpies out. And don't forget to like and comment below if there's anything special you wanna draw or to tell us that you're here. All right, for this drawing, I'm going to start with my paper a taller than it is wide, so I have room for my whole kitchen on there. Pretty much this picture is a square, so I'm just going to center it right in the middle. We're starting with our kitten's face. I'm going to start with two little eyes. So I like eyes to be kind of big. I like animals with big eyes. And then a little nose. A curious little face. Now this is kind of hard to see. Darken it up. But that's again why we go back through it with Sharpie so you can see it better, but also because it does make you a better artist. You can add some little whiskers in there. And you can always add more details in later too. This is just kind of our starting point. Always give your kitten eyelashes, eyebrows, different things to give it a personality. So we're just starting with that little face shape. And then we want to begin to build our kitten's head. I'm going to start with a little curve over the top. You could give your kitten some little spiky hair too if you wanted to. And then it's little pointy ears. Like a little bit of a rainbow and then two little mountains, one on each side. You can add some little inserts or rounded triangles inside that ear to give the kitten's ears that inner and outer look. And we're also going to then begin the head. Curve that down and around. This kitten kind of has a thick neck because he's stuck. I mean, how else does a cat get stuck, right? <laughs> So we're going to do a little curve here and then we're going to begin to add the little um, collar that he's wearing. I added little stripes to mine. You could do that, but you could also do something a little more simple and just make a pattern or a design of any kind. All right. Now I know this seems silly, but we're going to just do his front legs first, and then we're gonna build a wreath around him because the part of the cat that's closest to us or in the foreground is his head and the front half of his body or his legs that are hanging in through the hole of our wreath. So we're gonna come down from here and create a paw, come down from this side and create a paw. And then we're gonna come into the middle here. Now, a lot of times cats have that very furry chest, so I kind of did like a little M shape there to create the fur of his chest. And give him little toes for her. So we're going to stop at this point with our cat, and then we're going to go up to the top of him and add the bow. Leave about two fingers from the top of his head so you have room to add the wreath underneath. So you see it's not from the ear, but from the top of the head. We're gonna do a big bow and do that curve at the bottom of the bow so it looks dimensional. Bows are really just sideways hearts with a curve at the top or the bottom. Give it a little ribbon. Again, I know this looks kind of silly right now, but it's gonna make sense in a minute. Now imagine your cat's hanging here. So his body's here, but there's a wreath there. His little feet are gonna kind of be grabbing onto the wreath over here in the corners. Like, help. I gave him little toe beans. 
then we're ready to add that wreath into the background. So imagine kind of like a circle shape. You can even sketch it out. And this is why I like to start with pencil first, kind of get that circle in there, but a wreath is not smooth. We're gonna add all these little rainbows, kind of creating the bumps of our evergreen pieces. They can overlap, they cannot overlap. Really, it's your design. All right, so that's the outside of the wreath, but the inside of the wreath where he's peeking through would also kind of be showing in little areas, depending on how you do your drawing. But again, these curves are gonna be backwards. So when you look at this, the curves are facing inward instead of outward because that is the shape of our little wreath insert. So just a circle kind of in the middle there. Now we get to add the curious part. We're going to do a big curve for the bottom of his body. This is just his bottom. And then his little tail. So he's all stuck. His legs are connected. <laughs> and he's just hanging there having a good day. The last thing I added to my wreath were some little holly berries. I just did three little berries. And then I did my leaves. The straight line out and then curve away, kind of making an arrow, and then a sideways curve, and then curve back. And I did two of those for each set of berries. You're gonna fill these in wherever you feel like they need them. And you can make some bigger, some smaller, you know, do your own thing. Maybe you want to turn this kitty into a dog. You could do that too. The cool thing about starting in pencil and then moving to that outlining phase is it actually creates muscle memory so that you become a better artist. And who doesn't want to improve their drawing skills? If you do, make sure you join our channel by subscribing so you never miss a chance to watch a new video or find out what's happening around here at Studio CIA. Always something new happening. There's so much to draw. I could never run out of things to draw. My favorites are definitely animals and flowers and leaves like botanicals, but even when I draw landscapes or people, I still have a blast. It's just fun to create your own things and not feel like there's all these rules. All right, so that's our basic kitty. Now we're going to go back through this process again and we are gonna use our Sharpie and we're gonna outline all of that. I have both the ultra fine and the fine point Sharpie because the littler one really works best for like the holly, his little toe beans, its face and the line details. Everything else I do in the thicker Sharpie and it gives it a really cool look. All right, so we're gonna go back through that process again. I'm gonna go in the same order so you can follow along with me. We're gonna start with our cat's face. And the little eyes. And if you're new here, you may not know, but I also teach live virtual classes. So you can join us on Zoom with other kids your age and do the same drawing each week. And then we share and talk about our art and how we made ours different. Sometimes this cat is hanging over a fireplace and about to get his little tail singed. Sometimes the cat is in a tree with the wreath on it. Sometimes he's on a lamppost and sometimes he's on the front door. So it's fun to see what you guys all come up with and how different and interesting they look. Next, we're going to add our ears and forehead. And I'm going to add the inner ear with a littler pen. And then the head shape. 
we'll go into the color. I'm gonna do my stripes with the lines, little lines. If you're curious about those classes that I teach, be sure to check out the description of this video. I'll have all of that linked below. And on that note, if you're having fun with this drawing, be sure to like or comment on this video so I know what kind of content you want to explore. After the little legs, we're gonna add that bow. Start with a little rounded rectangle or square. Big curve up almost like antennae, and then a sideways heart or a bump valley and a bump, and then a smile to connect. Let me just add a little rainbow line in there. And that makes it look like that bow is tucked and twisted. And so it's 3D instead of just flat. She's looking so cute already. And then we come down here and add our little toes. A bigger bump I don't mind doing in the ultra fine, but the um, have a fine point, but the ultra fine for the little toes at the end for sure. They just get a little thick and chunky otherwise, and they just don't look as nice. All right, now we're ready for that wreath shape. You can sketch out that circle with your pencil first. And then just kind of follow those along, making it as fluffy and full as you want. You can do it a little smaller, a little bigger. Every wreath is different. Sometimes they're kind of sparse and sometimes they're really full. And you'll notice sometimes I don't line up perfectly on my pencil. I look at my pencils as a guideline. They're not a rule. So they're kind of there just to give me a, like a little bit of help and an idea of where I want to be. But if it looks like, oh, I want to make this a little wider or a little bigger, I just do it. So don't feel like you have to follow your own lines perfectly. We just want to make it us. Right, so we've got our wreath in there. Give our kitty a little bottom, making sure to touch each of the little feet so his feet don't look disconnected. And then the tail. Now on to my little holly. You could skip the holly and do something like ornament. You do candy canes. You could just do little lights around it. Again, don't recreate my art. I want you to create your very own. You're an artist in your own right. And you can get to be a better drawer just by practicing and trying different things. And it's just paper. If you don't like it, start over. There's another side. Or make a paper airplane out of it and get a new piece. Or have a bonfire, make some s'mores. Just don't treat it as precious. Art is not something you have to do right or wrong. You don't always have to be happy with it, but that doesn't mean that it's not good. Art has very many different kinds of styles and different people like different kinds of art. So... There is something for everyone, even if you don't like your art, there will certainly be someone out there that loves it. So don't discount yourself. And even the greatest artists out there, they have to paint one to 200 paintings before they even find one they like. For every one painting that Vincent van Gogh painted and was considered good, even not in his time, but after he had passed away, or that we see inside of museums or different displays, there's hundreds of them that weren't seen. So the goal is quantity and creating and enjoying the process and then perfecting. You have to enjoy the process before you can become a happy artist. You're already an artist, but to be a happy artist who loves what they do, just have to enjoy the process and realize sometimes you love it and sometimes you don't and that's okay. I'm going to add some little dots of circles in here. 
just to kind of jazz it up a little bit more and make it feel very finished and to make it obvious that our texture inside of our wreath has more going on than the smoothness of our kitten fur. You could add tiger stripes or spots to your cat. You could add a door behind it by just doing the little insets. You could put them on a fireplace, whatever you do. I hope you really enjoyed this video. Again, be sure to like and comment on it and check out our other videos to keep creating.